Okay, so last week was a, a, a wonderful start to uh, uh, the new series that we are uh, embarking on of life's biggest questions where we're uh, taking uh, one week and similar to uh, the way we did uh, great debates that each week is really going to be like its own standalone topic um, uh, and uh, trying to understand it to the best of our abilities, the different positions on matters uh, related to life's biggest questions related to uh, what we're doing here, uh, what our main goal in life is supposed to be, our relationship with God is supposed to be, what is emuna, what is bitachon, uh, what is prayer, um, why do we do mitzvos, um, uh, etc., free will, uh, heaven, hell, and everything in between. So that is, that, that is basically a, uh, a brief survey of what we're going to be uh, looking towards. Uh, it's amazing. Tonight is the uh, 68th yort site of the Chazanish. Rav Mishaya Karelitz uh, passed away in uh, 53. He uh, was uh, first from Vilna, and then uh, he moved, I believe, in 38. He went from Vilna um, to B'nai Brak, uh, where it was basically it was, it was desolate. It was nothing. Uh, and uh, he really built up the B'nai Brak community to what to what it is today, really the Torah community in Israel to what it is today. Him, uh, along with the Panavich Rav, really built what Torah, Torah Judaism is in, uh, in the land of Israel today. Uh, the Chazan Ish uh, was a very, very unique character because he was someone who was, I think, renowned as the greatest uh, halachist of the generation. He was known as the, as the greatest halachic scholar of the generation. In fact, that was how he even gained his fame. Nobody knew about him in Europe. Nobody knew about the Chazanish in Europe. Um, he uh, wrote these uh, Svarim, the Chazanish, when he was still living in Vilna. And 24-volume um, set on uh, all spanning the entire length of the Talmud, every single uh, topic in Halacha. And uh, he published these works, and it came across the desk of Rav Chaim Ozer Gredinsky, the Av Bezin of Vilna, the Gadol Ador. And uh, he read through it. <laughs> so this is unbelievable. So he actually started correspondence. With, uh, with the Chazanish, and um, nobody knew about the Chazanish until he moved. When the Chazanish moved to B'nai Brak, Rav Chaim Moser penned a letter and sent it to the community that was there, whoever was there in B'nai Brak, or maybe he sent it to the Gdol, and, and he said that, that uh, the Gadol HaDor has left, uh, has left Europe, um, and everyone's like, who are you talking about? And that was where the Chazanish really started to uh, pick up fame. So he was extremely humble, extremely well accomplished in Halacha, um, he was an amazing, um, uh, he was an amazing leader, Elana. Um, uh, he was an amazing leader. Uh, unfortunately, him and his wife were uh, never zoche to have any children of their own. Uh, they took in yeshiva students that uh, were a little bit more troubled uh, as their, as basically as uh, children of their own. Um, they lived by them and were really like their b'nai beso. Um, and uh, but as, but along with all those accomplishments, the Chazanish also was very well accomplished in areas of Jewish philosophy. In fact, he has a, uh, a, a section of his work in the, in the, um, at the end of his first work uh, on the, the laws of daily living. So he has at the end of, um, of the laws of, of Torah laning, of Kriya Satora, he has an essay about what happened at Har Sinai. What happened at Mountain Torah, right? A major question, the, right, the, the most, the most, monumental moment in uh, world history, right? And yet, it's very hard to understand exactly what happened at Har Sinai. You read through the Talmud and you see different, uh, uh, different stories. It's very hard to piece the whole thing together. There's no one solid description of, here's everything that happened, here's everything that we received, here's all that happened at Har Sinai. It's, you know, we, obviously there's a lot of faith in it. And uh, the students, these troubled yeshiva students that learned by the Chazanish, would ask him questions about it and ask him all of these different philosophical questions. And uh, because of these discussions that they had, he published in part of his halachic work, an essay at the end of the laws of reading the Torah as to what exactly happened at Har Sinai. He was extremely well accomplished in the area of philosophy. At the end of his life, he began composing a sefer on uh, Jewish philosophy uh, called Emunah uh, Vibitachon, understanding uh, trust and uh, faith and trust in God. And uh, he unfortunately never had the opportunity to finish the work. 
Uh, he was almost done with it and never had the opportunity to finish it. Um, but he has in the introduction to um, uh, his work, Emunu Bitachon, something absolutely amazing. Where he basically writes that, um, that we, on this earth, we were brought to this earth for whatever reason we were brought to this earth. But it is incumbent upon us. It is, it, we are demanded to be curious while we're here. We have to have curiosity. He says, Im ha'adam hu bal nefesh, that if a person is sensitive, if a person has a sensitive soul, v'sha'ato shas hashkes, and they, they sense that they have only a, a short moment of time on this planet, chafshi maravon te'uni, then they should be, you know, craving everything that they can while they're here, trying to understand as much as they can. The en of Marhiva, Machze Shamayim Larum, that a person should be looking up to the heavens to understand what's there, Va'arz Lo Omek, and looking out to the depths of the earth to understand what is there. Not, you know, to, to understand, you know, um, uh, all the different marine life, to understand um, uh, what are amphibians, to understand what what's a rainforest and how it survives, and understand. <laughs> So he, he was extremely curious about the world, extremely curious about the world. In fact, they actually say that he um, was, had, had, had particularly a good, a good head for medicine. Yeah, he, he studied anatomy. You understand, uh, he, he, he studied the anatomy, not only of humans, but of animals to understand exactly, which, which makes sense if you want to also be, just from a practical standpoint, to be a person who is uh, a major leader of halacha, right? You want to understand exactly how the human body works in order so that you could properly uh, give, uh, you know, give a halachic guidance. Now, most rabbis don't have necessarily the uh, mental capacity to be able to be well accomplished in both. So we'll learn halacha as best as we can, and we'll rely on the doctors to also give us advice. So the chazanish was able to do both. Um, in fact, it's interesting, though, that I say that because the chazanish, at least Rabbi Soloveitchik said, that the chazanish, um, uh, was uh, not necessarily the, he didn't have the most God-given genius. He, his genius was not God-given. Uh, in fact, he would, Rabbi Shechter tells us that Rabbi Soloveitchik would say to the students in his class, he would say, you, you should really study the Chazanish because, quote Rabbi Shechter, in the name of Rabbi Soloveitchik, because the Chazanish had a shvacha cup and you guys have a shvacha cup. So therefore you should, you should learn the Chazanish because they'll teach you how to, uh, how to learn with a shvacha cup. And 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 that that was the chazan issue is that he would he would he was so curious it would over it it, it overcame his you know that, not that he was you know God forbid uh, you know lacking in intelligence but 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 he worked very hard but it was curiosity is what drove him but he continues and he says he says that a person should never stop that hayechida hazos and the most important thing malafes es levavo v'mocho that a person should be curious with both their, their heart and their mind, and they'll become overwhelmed. That a person, their entire life, should never give up until they've tried to understand every single thing in this world. Okay. So with such a statement from the Chazanish, the question we need to be asking ourselves is what do we do with that curiosity? If that, I, I assume that uh, anyone that takes time out of their uh, weekly schedule, um, a busy, busy schedule, to come and uh, learn uh, these types of topics is obviously very curious. So the question is, what do we do with this curiosity? What's the best way to tackle these uh, questions that life throws at us that we should be constantly thinking about, trying to understand the best we can? So the uh, there are, as there are in most things in Judaism, there are different approaches to this. Number one comes from the Sifrei. The Sifrei, uh, Tanaic literature going back to, excuse me, going back to uh, the uh, uh, second, third century. The, um, the Sifrei says that uh, um, a person should spend their time learning and studying um, uh, our rabbinic traditions about these questions. Trying to learn what is, what is referred to as Agada. Agada is different than Halacha, where um, uh, there is a uh, uh, halacha, which we know is very clear, which is, you know, how to practically uh, fulfill the 613 commandments. 
Agada are uh, rabbinic, uh, is rabbinic advice, rabbinic stories, um, uh, um, uh, uh, interpretations of Pesukim and the Chumash, of stories in Tanakh, um, uh, trying to uh, piece together exactly kind of, I guess, what we would call um, uh, meta halacha where there is something above the halacha, right? The halacha was brought into the world as uh, God's manifestation of himself in the world. And now we want to try to understand that. So that's where agada comes into play. That is like meta halacha. Uh, for example, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, the ways of the Torah are uh, uh, pleasant and, uh, and peaceful. So that is not a halachic statement, right? That is an agadic statement. That's a statement of what is uh, a, a meta version of the of the Torah. So that is uh, that that's what the the, the says is what one should learn. It says in the Sifrei, Ritzon Chashataker Esmisha Amar Vayhi Haolam. You want to understand the one who said that the world should be, meaning you want to understand God. So what should you do? Lil Mod Agada. You should learn. Uh, you should learn these uh, stories uh, that are found in the Talmud and found in. Uh, in the Torah and found in Tanakh, learn the stories through doing that, you'll be able to understand God, cling to him better. But it's very, very vague. It, it, it's, it's extremely difficult to try and, uh, and do that, right? Just by simply learning a bunch of stories, you're going to come to understand God is a very, very difficult thing. So we're going to have to define exactly what Agada is a little bit better. And the, I think the other thing we're going to have to define is why it is that it's so important for us to try and understand God in the world, right? We just, we, we're saying, we're, we're assuming that this is an important thing to do. But why is it so important? So here the Rambam comes in, the Hela Garam. We always come back to the Rambam. Okay, Maimonides, that's the thing, when you cover everything, right? So uh, you have a working model for not just halacha, but everything, right? That was the Rambam. He laid everything out. Uh, so it's so easy to rely on the Rambam. So the Rambam... Um, uh, he, uh, he writes as follows. He says, that it's clear without question, known and clear, that love of God will only come to a person only if you think about it constantly, meaning you are engaged with God on a constant basis. In the appropriate way, which we'll have to figure out exactly what that appropriate way is. Leave everything else in the world and only cling to God. Okay? Which, again, we're going to have to figure out what that means because we said from the Chazanish before that we should be curious about the world. We should be think, we should try and understand everything that there is in the world. But the Ramam just said, I should leave behind everything and only think about God all the time. As it says in the Parsha of Shema, that we have to love God with all our heart and all of our soul. Meaning to say that we should just be connected to God all the time. So now here comes the Rambam and he explains, now how do we get to that point of love of God? How do we get to that point? Number one is, the only way to love God is by trying to understand him. By understanding God, you'll come to love God. Hadea, and through a knowledge of God, im ma'at ma'at, harbe harbe, then you'll come to love God depending on how much knowledge you have of God. That if your knowledge of God is a little bit, so then you'll only love God a little bit. If your knowledge of God is vast, so then you'll have an endless love for God. Lefikach, therefore, now we get to the punchline. A person should seclude themselves Therefore, a person should try and understand as much as they possibly can in the Torah and in the world that was given by God in order to understand God. So hold on. Now let's step. Let's take a step back. The Rambam just laid out for us a basic principle, which is that a very important principle, which is that in order for us to uh, be able to 
understand our place in the world, to accomplish our goals in the world, etc. So it's going to have to come with connecting ourselves to the creator of the world. And the Sifrei said, how do you do that? By learning the teachings of our rabbis. So what is that going to help? The Ramam says, because through doing that, you come to love God. How does that bring you to loving God? Because the more that you understand God, the more you'll come to love God. So therefore, in order to understand God, you need to completely change your mindset to a God-conscious mindset. That all of my consciousness in the world has God, uh, uh, you know, uh, as, the, as, as the thing that I am focused on. Where my glasses are not rose-colored, they are God-colored. And therefore, everything I'm looking at in the world is not for its own sake, but it's in order for me to understand Hashem in the world, and therefore will bring me to understand my place in the world. That's the way I'm supposed to learn Torah, and that's the way that I'm supposed to understand the creations of the world. And Rabbi Lobiansky thought that this makes a lot of sense. Rabbi Lobiansky is the Rosh Shiva of Yeshiva of Greater Washington, uh, the son-in-law of Danish Finkel Zatzal. He was the Rosh Shiva of the Mir Yeshiva. Rabbi Lobiansky is an unbelievable individual. He says that, you know, in order to understand this Ramah, I mean, think about it like a, uh, the, with the following uh, metaphor. He says, take a... Uh, um, take the Galo Hador. Take the Galo Hador, the greatest rabbi of the generation. Okay, you take uh, Rav Chaim Kinevsky. Okay, Rav Chaim Kinevsky, um, uh, you know, let's say one of his uh, great grandchildren comes and sits on his lap and plays uh, by Rav Chaim Kinevsky's desk, and uh, he, pull, he he strokes his beard. And if you ask him, you're gonna you say, "I love, I love the, I love the Alter Zeda. I love my Zeda. I love, I love Zeda Chaim." I love Zeta Kanievsky, whatever he would say, whatever he calls him, right? There's a certain love with the, with the child. Rukhaim Kanievsky should live to 120. But let's say that by the time that Rukhaim Kanievsky passes away, the child, his great-grandchild, his great-great-grandchild, whoever it is, never really had the opportunity to learn any of his uh, great-grandfather's works on Torah. Never actually had the opportunity to hear a lecture from Rukhaim Kanievsky to hear a bracha from Rav Chaim Kanievsky, to uh, learn any of his farm. So can we really say that the child has a full appreciation for the love of Rav Chaim Kanievsky? Does he fully love his grandfather? On some level, yes. On some level, no. Now take a person um, uh, who uh, maybe had never met Rav Chaim Kanievsky before in his life, but studied all of his works, listened to all of his lectures, understands his thought process better than anybody else in the world. But never sat on his lap and stroked his beard and called him Zadie and got a Hanukkah present from him. So does this person love Rav Chaim Kinesi, love the, love the Gadol Ador? On some level, yes. And on some level, the love is lacking. In both of those scenarios, for the opposite reasons, there is a lack of the love. For the child, it's because they don't really know their grandfather there's this emotional connection, but there, there's something lacking to it. It's, it's not standing on so much. It's a very strong emotional connection, but that's all it is. Versus the student understands Rav Chaim Kinevsky a lot better than the child, but will never understand the Rav Chaim Kinevsky in the way that the child does. We, our goal is to understand God in both ways. We need to build an emotional relationship with God. But the way to do that is through an intellectual approach is what the Ramam is saying. The more that I try and look at the world and look at the Torah through the lens of this is all God given. So then the more I'm going to love God, right? It's like in any relationship. If I want to actually build a loving relationship, I need to spend time uh, learning about the individual and uh, through that, I'm going to build a true love. Their likes, their dislikes, etc. It's like uh, Rav Shach, before he would eat an apple, Rav Shach, the Rosh Hashiva of the Panovich Yeshiva, before he would eat an apple, he would hold the apple, he would look at it and he'd say that the apple um, uh, is a uh, delicious snack and uh, it's, it has a beautiful shiny exterior. Inside of the uh, shiny exterior, waxy shiny exterior, there is uh, this uh, white meaty flesh that is full of vitamins and nutrients and it's delicious. And 
And it's perfectly constructed by God in order to give me exactly what I need. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. And then inside of that apple, there are these five little seeds that if cared for properly, uh, you can plant and water and take care of, and it will turn into hundreds more of these delicious snacks. And then you would make high eights and take a bite of the apple, right? It's just looking at the world in a different way. It's looking at the world of this is, this, this is here because God wills, wills it to be here. You have to start by looking at the world. You have to start by looking at the world, like, like the Chazanish said. Exactly. You have to first turn your brain on. You have to first turn your brain. It's not just going, I don't think that it's just going to come innately. I don't think it's not, it's, it's, that's why, that's why like all metaphors, the metaphor is lacking a little bit because we, it's not like, um, you know, when a child is born, there's this inherent love between the mother and the child, right? And, and while up, there are people in the world that can have that, but um, with, with God, but I think that we all need to turn our, our caps, our thinking caps on. Like my, uh, my grandmother, uh, uh, I should mention, by the way, that this class is uh, um, uh, in memory of Mazal Bat Amos, um, uh, uh, Allah Shalom, who uh, just passed away a couple of days ago, is my great aunt. Um, so my, my Safta was someone who, uh, you know, she, she, you know, had certainly a more emotional connection to God than, let's say, a, a connection to God on an intellectual level. But, you know, that was something that was innate within her, right? She didn't, you know, learn through, uh, you know, uh, the Rambam in order to understand God. She um, uh, just in her being, the way she grew up, or et cetera. So there needs to be a balance of the two. But ultimately, you're right, Stuart. It needs to start with uh, just turning our brain. And it, it, it is interesting uh, to point out that um, the, obliga the obligation to know God of Yediyas Hashem actually is nowhere in the Torah. It's not one of the 613 mitzvahs to know, to know God. It could be according to the Rambam, it is one of the 613 mitzvahs um, uh, to know God as Anochi Hashem Elokecha. But, but knowledge of God is not explicit in the Torah as, as a commandment. There are a number of commandments, though, that, that inherently require a knowledge of God. This is interesting. How we define knowledge of God, again, we're going to have to get to that also. But there are a number of commandments in the Torah that have a prerequisite of knowledge of God. For example, Anochi Hashem Lokech Hashem Tzisich Meretz Yisraim, I am Hashem your God, the mitzvah of Emuna. Right? Obviously, you, in order to fulfill that mitzvah, you have to understand what that means, that God is the creator of the universe and took us out of, of Egypt. You have to know who God is in that role. Um, the obligation of, uh, of uh, loving God, the Ahavta Es Hashem Lokech Right? Loving God. Obviously, in order to love God, you need to know God, like we said before from the Rambam. The mitzvah of lo yelecha lokim achirim apanai, do not have any other gods aside from me. Obviously, in order to know um, uh, what gods to stay away from, you now have to know what God to connect yourself to. Um, uh, again, is there, there's not, it's not explicit in the Torah, the, ob the obligation of yidiyas Hashem, of knowledge of God, of trying to understand God. But it's clearly inherent in so many mitzvahs. Um, the mitzvah, of, of course, of um, fear of God, obviously. Um, the mitzvah of Shema. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. The mitzvah to believe in the unity of God. Obviously, that is perhaps the most uh, clear example of that. Uh, it's not an explicit commandment of the Torah to know God. But there are these other commandments in the Torah that clearly require us to uh, know God the best we can. In fact, there's a Rambam that says that this is part of what defines the Jewish people over the other nations of the world. The, the difference between the Jewish people, and because we have the Torah, versus the other nations of the world and our obligation to learn Torah, etc., sets us aside in that we are the nation that was designated to know God better than all the other nations of the world. This is what the Ramam writes. He says, the Adavar Holech Umaskaber Bibne Yaakov, that the, the, the defining characteristic of the descendants of Yaakov and Ubnivalim Alehem and those that are gathered around them, meaning the Jewish people, the Nasis Baolam Uma, that God wanted to create one nation in the world, Shehi Yodas Hashem, that understands God. This is, this is what defines the Jewish people. Part of what defines the Jewish people and separates us from the other nations is to understand God. So getting back to our original question, which is, 
So the Chazanish told me I need to have curiosity. The Ramam told me that, the, that I need to live life with this curiosity, but that the curiosity is ultimately coming down to trying to understand God in the world. I mean, it's just a different, it's a different experience when one goes outside and uh, they, you know, just it's, it could be something as simple as you see the, a, a leaf on a tree. You point out one of the leaves on the tree and you say, that's only there because God wills it to be there. It just, it's, it's an overwhelming experience. Try, you just try to go through, and in the, in the United States, it's rather easy, right? It's, 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 there, uh, uh, there's so much to see. There's so much to see. That, uh, living here, yeah. right? It, it's, it's unbelievable. The opportunities are just endless. Uh, but I think it's endless no matter where you are. Just looking at the world of why, why am I here? Why is this here? Or, or rather, you don't even have to ask it as a what. Just look at what's here. right? Look at what God has created. right? When we learn Torah, coming with the perspective of that th this is the will of God manifesting itself in the world. They say that the Tanaim and Amoraim, that are sc the, 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 um, the scholars in the Talmud, used to study halacha when they would study the torah they'd have a discussion about um uh the order that one is supposed to make kiddush in beishamai would have his opinion basil would have his opinion and the way that they would express their opinions is that they would say that i believe that the will of god is that first you're supposed to recognize the day before you make hagafen and then the other opinion would say no i believe that the will of god is that we're so like that is the way that they would talk, that it was, it was more than just this intellectual pursuit of understanding just another discipline that's in the world, but rather it is trying to pursue an understanding of God manifesting himself in the world. So we have to have the curiosity. We need to have our, our, our heads turned on like the Ramam said, but the question is, what is the most direct way to get to this place? If I want direction, right? Uh, it's, and it's, it's, very, it's a very uh, esoteric you know, concept that we've come up with um, and that we're studying, but it doesn't provide a lot of direction. So should I spend more of my time studying the Talmud? Should I spend more of my time studying Misil Shisharim? Should I spend more of my time going and hanging out at the beach in order to understand God, right? What is, so now what do I do, right? I, I want some direction. So obviously there needs to be a balance of everything, but if I need to kind of carve out my, I don't have a limited time in the day. So how am I supposed to do it? So the Rambam actually has a schedule for this, but before we get to the, the, the final conclusion, there's, a, um, there's an amazing Gemara that basically addresses this. The Gemara says, this, the Gemara in Bava Basra on Kuflam Adalatam and Olive says, Amar Lava Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. They say about Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai the following, Shalohiniach, Mikra u Mishna Gamara Halachos Fagados Dikduke Torah Dikduke Sofrim the Kalan Vhamurim Vixeros Shavos the Kuvos the Gamatrios Uma that every single area of Torah knowledge uh Psukim in the Torah, uh the oral law, Gemara, Halacha, all of the stories, all of the lessons. The Dikduke Torah, trying to understand the nuances and grammar of the Torah, the nuances of grammar in the Mishnah, trying to understand the, the easy mitzvos, the more difficult mitzvos. Oh, there is nothing, all of the gematros, all of the enumerations in the Torah, all of that, Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai know. All of it, right? It's almost like we're talking about uh, a Shlomo HaMelech, right? King Solomon was the wisest of all men. So they say, they seem, seem to be making a similar statement about Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka, that he was perhaps the wisest of all men in, in that era for sure, and perhaps, uh, perhaps beyond. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka knew everything. No stone left unturned in Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka's world. And he said the following. He said... Oh, and, and they say that he also knew, he also knew the Sichos Malachi Asharis. He understood the conversations of the ministering angels. And then the Gemara says, and he knew Davar Gadol Vidavar Katan. He knew these great things, and he knew, we'll call them less great things. Davar Gadol and Davar Katan. What's that? Right? It seems like we covered everything, right? Halacha, Gemara, Mishnah. Um, Jewish philosophy, everything seemed to have been covered and everything else. So 
What was this final statement that he also knew Davar Gadol and Davar Katan? This great thing and this minor thing. So what is that? So the Gemara says Davar Gadol. What's Davar Gadol? That is referencing Maisa Merkava. Maisa Merkava, the uh, story of the chariot, the chariot of fire with um, uh, on, on, on uh, Har Carmel and God reveals exactly, basically what it comes down to is uh, God revealing the secrets to the creation of the world. Okay? I consider that a pretty, uh, uh, law, pretty, pretty vast accomplishment of Rabbi Yochanan Mazaka. He was able to understand the secrets of creation of the world. Right? You could spend your, your a whole lifetime just in the first pasuk of the Torah. Bereshis bar lokim as va'aretz. God created the heavens and the earth. He, w- he understood exactly how creation worked. That's amazing. Right? Uh, you have um, uh, physics professors and uh, astrologers trying to understand this their entire lives. Rabbi Yochan ben Zaka actually got it. He knew it. He understood. He got to the final goal. Okay? What's Dover Gatan then? What's a, what's a small matter? A, 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 minor, a minor thing that he also understood? So this, the Gemara says, Havayos da Abaye The conversations, the debates between Abaye and Rava. Abaye and Rava are the Perhaps the two most famous Amorayim, um, uh, uh, Talmudic scholars that are found in the uh, that are found in the Gemara. So all of the debates, which there are many of them, that are found in the Gemara, um, uh, Rabbi Yochanan Metzakai knew uh, and understood all of those as well. Davar Gadol, a great accomplishment, was understanding a great matter, was understanding Maisa Merkava, the creation of the world. Something less important was understanding all of the debates between Abaye and Rava. So what seems like is that the Gemara is making a stance over here that if you want to accomplish a lot in this world, you want to understand God in this world, right? We have our thinking caps on. We're curious. We want to understand everything that was on this list. But the greatest accomplishment, it sounds like, was a real human understanding creation of the world, which if I want to do that, I should probably spend all of my time studying philosophy and uh, cosmology. That's what it sounds like. Trying to understand Jewish philosophy. That's that, right? And then the less important things are studying the Talmud, studying the Gemara, studying the different opinions of Abai and Rava. But when you look in the yeshivas, that is not the approach that is taken. No, that is not the approach that is taken. Uh, the approach is, in fact, exactly the opposite. And, and not, without, uh, not without proper sources to back that up. In fact, there's a Gemara that seems to contradict this concept of that is an amazing accomplishment to try and understand uh, creation of the world. There's a Gemara that says one should probably stay away from that. There's a Mishnah that says in the beginning of, Mitzakas, of the second chapter of Mitzakas Agiga that Kolam that anyone that looks at Pardes, Pardes is referencing also the secrets of the world. Anyone that tries to understand the secrets of the world, better that they were never created. Trying to understand the things that in their depths, above, below, uh, all better that they were never created. So I don't understand. Which one is it? Is it better that, is, is, is it a great accomplishment to understand the creation of the world? To understand the secrets of the world? Spend my, all of my time learning philosophy? Or is it better to stay away from it? Like Mark Hagig is saying, and therefore I should learn. The Davar Katan, I should learn. Okay, I can't understand the, the creation of the world. So, I, okay. I might as well understand uh, at least uh, the Talmud. It's no great shakes. So, uh, so, so what do we do with this contradiction? So Rabbi Soloveitchik uh, gave, the following, gave the following answer. Rabbi Soloveitchik gave the following answer. He, had a, he has a, uh, an essay called The uh, uh, Halachic Man, um, uh, a short book. I don't know if anyone here has ever read the, the, the work Halachic Man, but I'd highly recommend it. Um, it actually was written as a bi- biographical sketch of his grandfather, Rav Chaim Soloveitchik. The halachic man, who is the halachic man that's referencing Rav Chaim Soloveitchik, uh, his grandfather, the, uh, the Rosh of Lajan Yeshiva, and then later the, uh, the Rav of, uh, of Brisk. So his grandfather, Rav Chaim, Rabbi Soloveitchik, thought that his grandfather figured out how to, uh, how to accomplish uh, the, their life's mission. He, he did it. He, he, he figured it out. Uh, and uh, wrote this work, Halachic Man, basically describing how his grandfather accomplished this and what his grandfather stood for. So he writes over there, 
that ultimately the, the way to understand God in this world, the way to understand how to be a good person in this world, the way to understand uh, how to have emuna in this world, the way to understand how to have trust in God in this world, uh, the way to understand the difference between the rights and wrongs, uh, truths and, and, and fictions in this world is through the study of halacha, through the study of the mitzvos, through the study of God's commandments. That is the way to properly understand God in this world and therefore, by definition, come to love God closely and, and intimately and then we'll be able to understand our role in the world as well. This is what Rabbi Soloveitchik felt and this is what he felt that his grandfather stood for as well. And he writes as follows. He says, Torah study gives the Jew insight as direct and profound as man is privileged to attain into the revealed will of his creator, which is unbelievable, by the way. Right? Just stopping and considering that for a moment. That when we sit and, and learn what, you know, how to properly shake a lul of an esrog, that is understanding God in the world, how God wants to be manifested in the world, for us to understand him in the world. Through the study of halacha, the imminent expression of God's transcendent rational will, man's knowledge of God gains depth and scope. Further, religious study is a stimulus to the total spiritual personality. Faith can, ne can be neither profound nor enduring unless the intellect is fully and actively engaged in the quest of God. Which is a very, very important statement. That we are, and the way the Rabbi, Rabbi Shepard says this, there's a difference between learning about God and, and trying to understand God. The difference is learning about God, learning about Torah, is a drusha, a Shabbos morning drusha, right? That would be trying to under, learn about God, right? When we have, when we hear a very, very fiery and inspiring um, uh, directive to study Torah as much as we can, and Torah is amazing, and etc., like basically what we're doing tonight, we're learning about Torah. We're learning about God. But in order to have it, which is could be very inspiring but it's not enduring and it's not lasting. In order for it to actually manifest itself and for it to have an effect on you, to know what to do with that, we need to learn halacha. Through the study of halacha, through the study of the commandments, of the 613 commandments, we can understand God in this world in a practical way. And therefore, we'll come to be able to act accordingly. So now, again, one could be left with kind of, of being in a place of, so hold on one second. If I just figure out you know what to do right it's kind of like you know it's it's almost like reading the cliff notes right i i i don't need to read the book i don't need to um uh, you know understand the uh, the 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 heart and mind of of shakespeare i'll just uh read the uh the cliff notes on romeo and juliet right that 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 obviously does not work i can't read that and i can't just know what to do i need to study it I need to get to the depths of it. I need to try and when I study, when I when I study halacha, when I want to know how to build a sukkah, that is supposed to come with a sense of not just trying to accomplish a goal of having a sukkah, but trying to come with a sense of, like what the Chazanish said, this curiosity of why am I even building a sukkah in the first place? What am I supposed to accomplish through sitting in this sukkah? Why is it that a sukkah needs to be made from um, uh, um, uh, if the walls can be made from any material that I want, but the schach needs to be made from material that uh, grew from the ground but can't uh, um, uh, be, a, uh, be, be a vessel for, uh, for toma, to accept purity, uh, impurity. Uh, what, what, is a, what is a mikvah? Why does God want um, a person to be purified by going to the mikvah? Trying to understand that not just what to do, but, but what is in the depths of that mitzvah, in the halacha, we come to understand God. So Rabbi Yochan ben Zakkai, yes, it was Davar Gadol that he was able to understand the Maisa Merkava, but that only came, came through a lifelong pursuit of trying to understand God, not by starting with Bereshis, not by starting and ending with Bereshis, but by going through every single one of the 613 mitzvahs in their depth. And then at the end, 
you circle back to now I understand my place in the world. I understand God's place in the world. I understand exactly how this all works. I understand the fact that there is this vast ocean. I understand that there is rainforest. I understand that we were created with whatever the purpose is, but there's this purpose that we were created with. I can understand that life becomes a lot clearer to me once I have gone through trying to understand the depths of the Torah first. And then I can understand the secrets of the Torah after that. This is, by the way, why, you know, there's this um, uh, old saying that, uh, you, or th this, this old directive that you can only learn Kabbalah once you reach the age of 40 years old. All right, you've heard this, right? You only learn Kabbalah. So I know people that have studied Kabbalah when they're much, much younger than 40 years old. And I know people that have never studied Kabbalah in their entire lives, but are well-accomplished Torah scholars. Studying Kabbalah too early, you jump the gun. 40 is not a, uh, you know, it's not like there's this halacha emotion misina that you have to start studying Kabbalah when you're 40 years old. It's not, no such thing. But if the, the, that, that statement is basically telling me that you can't start too early. You need to make sure that you, you have gone through the basic steps of, of, of just what, how God is manifesting himself in the world before I go to Misa Merkava. The last thing on the list was Rabbi Yochum and Zakai's accomplishment of understanding the creation of the world. That was the last thing on the list. So yes, we have to study Jewish philosophy, but that is hopefully supposed to just be a motivator, a conduit for us to dedicate our lives to understanding God's manifestation of himself in the world through the commandments and through doing so, and we go into the depths of the matter. So then we're going to be able to understand on a more profound level all of those other bigger questions that the world throws at us. This, I think, is echoed by, um, uh, um, by a statement that's made by the Ramah. The Ramah, Rav Moshe Israelis, uh, the uh, chief rabbi of Krakow, passed away at uh, the age of uh, uh, 40, uh, 42 years old, um, uh, lived from 1530 to 1572, uh, was an unbelievable Torah scholar, and he writes in the Torah Ha'ola, uh, he writes, and it was one of his works on halacha on the, uh, the laws of Kashrus. He says, That yes, one needs to um, uh, uh, spend their life learning. But if you're learning without thinking, so then what are you doing? You have to actually know them. That you need to actually be thinking about these things with proofs and investigation. Vizui tachlis ha'adam. That's the key, the key line. And this is the purpose of man. Our purpose in the world, or we'll say, in order for us to understand our purpose in the world, which one can also say is their purpose in the world, is in order to not just learn and attain knowledge, but it's to have that knowledge lead to wisdom. Without not that knowledge leading to wisdom, so then what did, what did you do? All you did was just memorize a bunch of uh, a bunch of Torah, yeah. So, so like I said, I I, I have a uh, a uh, a friend of mine who um, uh, he he's gone through Shas multiple times, knows it like the back of his hand, but uh, unfortunately is uh, not a Torah observant Jew. No Shas like he knows every single Gemara backwards and forwards. I can't, I, no, nobody could trip him up, right? He, I, but he, he's not, he's not Shomer Torah Mitzvahs. And you have other people who, uh, you know, can have a 45 minute Shmona Esrei, but don't understand the first thing about Hilchos Tefillah, right? It, it's, it's finding the balance. So Rabbi Soloveitchik, and with this will close, Rabbi Soloveitchik continues in the, uh, uh, in the Halachic Man. And he writes and he says as follows. He says that when a person delves into God's Torah and reveals the inner light and splendor and enjoys the pleasure of creativity and innovation, he merits communion with the giver of the Torah. The ideal of clinging to God is realized by means of coupling of the intellect with, divine, with the divine idea that is embodied in the rules, laws, and traditions. So it's both. It's absolutely both. So I think step one, just to summarize, step one is the Chazanesh. We have to be curious, be extremely curious. 
The Chazanesh only became who he was, Chuso Yagen Alenu, due to his curiosity. We have to be extremely curious. That curiosity needs to be, as the Rambam said, that we go and try and understand as much as we can through the lens of trying to understand God through this curi- with this curiosity. How do we do that? By learning as much Torah as we possibly can, but not learning in order to attain knowledge, learning in order to understand wisdom and love of God in the world. And through doing so, as, as the Ramal pointed out, we can understand our purpose and what our purpose is and what our role in the world is as well. Okay. Uh, so, oh, I meant to mention this. I meant to mention this. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, there's a lot to be said. My, I see my Chavrus is waiting for me, though. We're going to pick up with that next time. Bli and Eder. Rav Chaim Vlajner in the Nefesh HaChaim has a whole uh, essay just about uh, exactly, how, exactly how Torah Lishma works. Bli and next time, we'll pick, up with, uh, we'll pick up with that. All right. Very good. Shkayach, everybody. Okay. Shkayach, uh, Marlene and uh, Felicia. Wonderful to see you. Or at least look at your names. Thank you so much. It was really, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Bye.